The men's defending world champion is Germany's Faris Al Sultan. Sometimes they say the finish is just a blur of emotions. How about a total blackout? My crossing the finish line, I don't have any rem remembrance of that. It's completely gone. L long after I've won, you know, I was having a shower and then, you know, it, it, it popped up like, hey, you really did that? Finishing the Ironman is major. Winning, extraordinary. Repeating, well, everything has to go right. Just ask 2004 champion Norman Stadler. He had a two flat tire experience last year and his chances of repeating were done. A meltdown ensued. You can understand Stadler putting in a little bit more preparation time at the bike racks. 32-year-old Australian Chris McCormack. He has been a leader during the race. But he has horror stories after that. One of my experiences here have been brutal, to be honest. I came here, I think every year I've started this race as one of the favourites. And I've been so successful at every other race I've ever done and this one has just seemed to haunt me. Last year was his best finish ever, sixth place. There are probably 20 guys out there that are physically able to win the race. And if you see us train together, I mean, there's not much difference. Pantano is first on the bike. But Al Sultan is right there, as is Australian Chris McCormack. At this year's Ford Ironman World Championship, the conditions are uncharacteristically calm. At the beginning of the bike, the historically brutal winds are non-existent. The legend Mark Allen said he never saw it like this, and that if you're ever going to go fast, today is the day. No one is taking advantage of these conditions more than the 2004 champion Norman Stadler. The German is known for being strong on the bike, that is, when it's working. Now some athletes have selective amnesia, others remember every game. Does Stadler allow himself to even think about what happened a year ago? It was my seventh race here in Hawaii and it happened the first time that I had a flat tire, so I wasn't prepared for that. I couldn't get the tire off and I was waiting for the support car and that it takes forever if you wait on the on the road and your, your competitors they fly by but you know as a defending champion did not finish is not good this then is his new chance and Stadler is blowing by the competition knowing he has to build a lead large enough to survive the men who can quite simply run faster than he does. Chris McCormack, whose Ironman history has been a learning experience. You know, a lot of people got upset because of what I said, you know, but I've said that I came here and said I want to win the race. And everyone's like, oh, you can't do that. You've never, you haven't paid your dues. It's such an American word, paying your dues. And I thought, man, I've been doing this sport for seven years. I've paid my dues well and truly. I'm paid up in full. A lot of people call me cocky. I think a lot of the Americans misinterpret who I am. Anyone who knows me, I'm, I'm the least cockiest person in the world. I'm just passionate about this sport. You know, I grew up admiring the champions, not disrespecting them. I, I had pictures of Mark Allen and Dave Scott on my bedroom wall. Why would I ever disrespect what they did? Rock bottom for McCormack on Kona came early in his first year. I had a 13 minute lead off the bike and I ran out of town, high fived my father and said, I'll see you in two and a half hours and we'll, uh, we'll go out for a couple of beers and we'll bank this check and I absolutely melted out, out in the lava fields and failed to finish. And I went home utterly disappointed, couldn't believe it. You know, I think I disrespected, not so much the distance in the race, but I disrespected how tough the Hawaiian Ironman is. 
you know, there was a lot of happy people when I failed. And, and maybe, it was the, maybe it was the best thing that happened to me because I think that it's the failures that will make the success so much better. Had I come here and won this race on debut, I probably wouldn't be the athlete I am today. Those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it, but Chris McCormack remembers. Norman Stadler is still rocking across the lava fields and nobody on record can beat him on wheels. The huge bonus is that there's no heat from the sun for the lava to absorb and turn this place into a sauna. And there's no wind. It's like everybody hit the Iron Man weather lottery. Last year's champion Faris Al Sultan is in second, leading a pack of pursuers, which includes Aussie Chris McCormack, whose strength is in the run. Meanwhile, Norman Stadler has come roaring into town and he's made history. He's covered the 112 mile bike course in four hours and 18 minutes. His time on the bike is the fastest in Ironman history. In 2004, Stadler became the first to break through and essentially win because of the bike time cushion. Now, the Ironman says, okay, do it again. Time check. Stadler has a seven minute lead over the next cyclist and 10 over his biggest threat. And finally, the pack trickles into town. American cyclist Chris Lieto is in second. He's won Ironman races before, but never the world championship. Aussie Chris McCormack is right there. So is last year's champion Faris Al Sultan. The big question for all is when do you push it? The key to success here is patience. I think this event has taught me to be patient. So, yeah, if I'm still there with, uh, if I get off the bike in the hunt, yeah, we could, we could have a night on a drink. McCormick is confident because he has a running pedigree, but he's facing that 10 minute deficit beginning the marathon of 26.2 miles. The men's race in the Ford Ironman World Championship is about to leave town. 10 miles in and it's turning into a two man event. Norman Stadler's lead is eight and a half minutes over Chris McCormack. The Aussie has been near the lead at this point before, but in his words, he's crumbled. He's been quoted as saying, I consider myself the best runner in the sport. Well, today, in order to win, he's going to have to be just that. For the second time in his life, Norman Stadler is trying to prove that years of history are wrong. Build up a big lead on the bike, then hang on through the marathon. In 2004, it worked for the first time. Now, the competition is wary and maybe cocky that the old way still works. Be solid, be steady, and don't have a weakness in any of the three disciplines. Chris McCormack, he has his own history issues here that he hopes will not apply. Well, I came from a short course background, racing the Olympics and those sort of events. and. And I just used to sit here and watch the NBC coverage at home in, the, in my lounge room with the air conditioning on and you cut a 17 hour race program into one hour coverage with beautiful music and some lovely stories and it looked easy. It really did and I, uh, I, I came here just expecting to get out in those lava fields and that nice music would kick in and, and I'd float to the finish line and it would all be rosy dory and there we go, I can go home and bank the cheque and, and, and rejoice my win. And, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't turn out like that. Norman Stadler, Germany. Chris McCormack, Australia. I am a professional triathlete. This is my fourth Ironman. I'm a former world champion. A win comes about by making a gutsy move in the critical point of a race, and sometimes people aren't prepared to do that. And you have to be prepared to take that move, make it, and pay the ultimate price. If you don't, it's not the right move, and um, I'm prepared to do that.
It's a race to crown a world champion. And it's a two-man show. Two men who, for the last time, get a chance to look each other in the eye. Check the clock and decide what's possible. When this marathon began, Chris McCormack was down 10 minutes to Norman Stadler. Now it's four and a half. Twenty-three miles into the race, the deficit continues to fall, but an added opponent is the legendary heat of the late afternoon on the Big Island of Hawaii. It's time to do the math. McCormack is now 250 behind. He needs to be 35 seconds faster in each of the remaining miles to finish side by side with the German. McCormack's mile pace is 625. Stadler's is 711. And Stadler's not slow, but the Aussie is fast. Two point two miles to go. McCormack is 90 seconds behind. He can see the chopper above Stadler, and he can probably see Stadler himself. Still, he seems confident as he returns to town. McCormack clearly is giving everything. Winning this race for a pro is a career changer. On the final descent, Stadler hears a coach's pleadings. The difference is a little over a minute. Norman Stadler has methodically made it into town. The finish line is slowly approaching. But Chris McCormack isn't doing anything slowly. He knows the time for patience is long gone. In the past, Kona has smacked Chris McCormack around and hard. But this day, he's fighting back, conquering the island and the race. He's made up over nine minutes over the course of this marathon. Unfortunately, he needed to make up over 10 to catch Norman Stadler. For Stadler, it's his second time. Officially, the separation is 1 minute 11 seconds, one of the top three closest finishes in the history of the race. As always, there is sportsmanship and respect. McCormick, he did a, such a great race today, and uh, I was scared in the end, but you know, I won by one and a half minutes. Last year's champion, Faris Al Sultan, is next. And Stadler is there for him, too, waiting seven minutes and eight seconds for him to get there. Germany has had a good day.